Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to take in any custom shape and to turn it into a layer mask inside of DaVinci Resolve 14. So what we have to do to turn this into a proper layer mask for DaVinci Resolve is to create a new layer, and if you use Photoshop instead it's pretty much the same steps. And I need to right click on this image and do Alpha 2 Selection. What this is going to do is grab a selection all around the areas where there's actual data here, so basically the exact shape of the dragon. Now we go on to the new layer, and I fill bucket tool, and turn it completely white. Now we have the right shape to import into DaVinci Resolve. So when you export your image in whatever program you're using, make sure you export it as a PNG file. So in DaVinci Resolve, you're going to want to import that PNG image, which as you can see here, should be a white outline of the shape followed with black areas for everywhere else. The alpha gets converted into black space, so you don't actually need to fill this in with black in your image editor. If it's completely transparent, it will be brought in as a black background. So next you're going to need to prepare the clips where you want to implement this effect of the custom layer mask. So I'm going to grab a couple clips here and just put them in the timeline. Nothing particularly special here. Now if, like in the intro, you're going to want the layer mask to show its own video clip inside of here, this being a different video clip than the one that's on the outside, then we need to add in a second clip above this on the track. So the second clip, which is going to fill in the dragon area, that's going to go on video track 3. So let me grab another random clip here from this video source, and I'm going to drop this into video track 3. Next, we should drop the shape into video track 2 at the point in time where we want the effect to happen. Now you can't see video track 2 or video track 1 because video track 3 is currently set in normal mode, so we need to go into the inspector for video track 3 and we need to change the composite mode from normal to multiply. So that's kind of towards the bottom. So what's going to happen when you have video track 3 and multiply is it's going to take the white and video track 2, that's the shape outline, and it's actually going to show video there. But everywhere else where it's black, it's effectively multiplying it by a value of 0, and you know that when you multiply anything by 0, you get 0. Or in other words, it's not going to show video outside of the boundaries of the white shape. Now in order to make this effect more obvious, uh, one thing I did in the original clip was lower the opacity of video track 1 down, so we can lower it to something like 50%. And by doing that, you can really obviously tell that video track 3's clip is different than the one on video track 1. Now what should be noted is that you should only have video track 3 in multiply mode as long as you want this effect to happen. So you might want to do something like this, make cuts for the areas where you have this dragon shape, and then go to the other clips, so you can hold control down and select multiple clips at once, and change that back to normal if you want that clip to show up over video track 1, or you can just delete those extra clips, so I'll cut them out with control X. So now the really cool thing about having the mask as a image that you can manipulate is that we can go in the inspector for video track 2's dragon mask, and we can do something like lower the zoom. So whenever we change the position, the zoom, the rotation, whatever components, that's actually going to be affecting the video track 3 as well, because once again it's multiplying by video track 2 shape. So as long as you're using the shape that you brought in, you can manipulate it in a lot of different ways. You can even increase the pitch or the yaw if you want to make something really weird. Some extras you could do is add in something like a X wipe transition from the effects library on the video track 2, which will automatically affect video track 3, because if there's no white space in video track 2, then video track 3 is completely invisible. So you only need to actually add the transitions onto the mask layer. So that's pretty much how you do a custom mask inside of DaVinci Resolve 14. I hope you found this video to be helpful. I've been Chris, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in my future video content.